All right, so we are still on the same exercise, uh, which is exercise six of our um, Euclidean geometry, number two. So I want us to consider this question. We are given, uh, that is a uh, question two, two circles, touch at C, they touch at C. That is they, 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 they meet. Okay, they meet at C. At this point, C, they do meet. Okay? The DE is a tangent. So this DE, this whole line is a tangent to both circles at, at C. So let's, let, let's, let's see this statement alone. This here line, this line. DE is a tangent to both, both circles. Meaning to say to the smaller circle, it is a tangent. So the theorems of a tangent must be applied to both. Which theorems? The angle between a tangent to the circle and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Remember that. So with this condition alone, it gives us to say angle T, which is the angle between a tangent and the chord. Let, 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 let's consider the smaller circle and the chord, this one, must be equal to the angle in the alternate segment in the smaller circle. Considering the smaller circle alone. So that means this must be equal here to you. Angle T must be equal to you. Considering the bigger circle, again, this is a tangent that we have. That's our tangent to the chord of the bigger circle now. Where is it creating the angle? The bigger circle, it creates the angle here at A. So it follows that the angle at A, this one, created by the chord, must be equal to the same T, to the, that is for the bigger circle. Are we seeing that? It's something that we can just relate to the information, just to relate to the information that we're given there. This angle is the same as this angle, it is the same as this angle. Which same applies to this part? Considering the angle between the tangent, between the tangent. So this W here is supposed to reach the tangent like this. It is actually like uh, the way that is drawn there, but it's supposed to be part of the tangent. So considering the same situation that we have there, what is going to happen to the smaller circle? This is the chord. It creates the angle where at X. This. So this angle X and W must be the same angle between the chord, I mean, between the tangent and the chord. So it follows that our W must be equal to X. The same W considering the bigger circle now. Yes, this chord. And where is this chord creating the angle? It creates the angle at, at B. And what is the angle at B? 80 degrees. So it follows that this W is also equal to see this angle here, which is 80 degrees. So if it is like that, it means also X is 80 degrees. All right, guys, I'm not answering the question. I'm just analyzing the diagram. Just to analyze it. It, it is something that you're supposed to, to, to have in exam. All right, no problem going to talk about that as, as time of exams is going to approach very, very soon. So we are given this information, this and that, then the angles A54, as we saw, 2.1, determine with reasons, T, U, everything, all these angles up to, up to Z. So we already talked about these ones. T is equal to U, is equal to this. So meaning to say if T is 54, it means uh, U is also going to be what? 54. 
Remember I said T is equal to U and T is equal to 54. So U is also going to be 54. So all this is taken from the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment from our theorem 7. So I'm just going to explain, but guys, you're supposed to write this, okay? Then let's move on to another one. The W, the X, they are the same. So X is also equal to 80 from the same theorem. Again, we saw that uh, from the same theorem. So it means this is going to be 80, all right? Angle X is going to be 80. All right, uh, remember we say du is also 54 from this con concept. All right, so you're going to write the same theorem there, guys. I want, just wanna, I want you to write everything there. All right. Also, okay, so w here, we say this is 80. So let us see. Uh, T here is 54. So there are some angles that we can also determine. We can determine the angle y there, considering angles on a straight line. All right, B, F, C is a straight line. So angles on a straight line, that's Y is equal to 180 degrees minus 80 degrees, and that is going to be 100 degrees. Sorry for that. So this will be uh, 100 degrees. So meaning we are taking this from angles on a straight line. So that is going to be the reason, angles on a straight line. Okay. So that is, we have got this as 100 uh, degrees. The same with V, V and U, they are on a straight line. As you can see, V and U, they're on a straight line. So it means our V is going to be the difference, just like what we said, angles on a straight line add up to 180. So V is going to be 180 minus the angle there at, at U which is 54 degrees. So the difference, we, we, are, we are simply working with the difference there because we are considering a straight line and that is going to be uh, one at uh, 26 degrees. So meaning we have got this angle, 126 degrees. We are left with angle Z from where? Can we determine this? A straight line, okay, you can consider that. Angles in a triangle, you can consider that so many ways. So it's up to you, you can consider Z as angles in a triangle using F, G, C. You can consider it as angles on a straight line. Still, you're going to have the same answer. So angle Z is going to be, angle. if you consider angles on a straight line, it is going to be 180. Minus because we know that angles on a straight line they add up to 180. So we're going to subtract these two angles that we are given, which are already on the straight line. So it's either you're going to write it as 180 minus you add the two angles that you're supposed to subtract from from 180, or you can just write it as 180 degrees minus 54 degrees minus 80 degrees, like that. It is one and the same thing. It is one and the same thing. So the presentation is uh, important for you to understand how exactly you're presenting this. So this whole part was going to give you uh, a 46 degrees if we to simplify properly. So that is our angle Z, 46 degrees. So like I said, you can consider angles on a straight line as your reason. Or you can consider angles in a triangle. They add up to 180 degrees. So this is how you are supposed to answer this. 2.2, .2, is DE parallel? This is parallel. If you see this. So they are saying, is DE parallel to BA? Justify your answer. If you are to prove for parallel lines, uh, this is what I want you to, to take note. You, you are given a condition where you want to prove that these two lines, they are parallel. This is the idea here. All right, let us just give this. These two lines, 
if truly they are parallel, if truly the lines are parallel, there must be a condition of alternate angles. So you are supposed to prove that alternate angles are equal. Remember, our alternate angles are equal. The alternate angles are the ones that gives us what? A Z. Or it can be an N like this, whatever way that you can have. So if these two angles are equal, it means these two lines are parallel. So it is something that you are supposed to show that or to prove that. So you're going to show that this is, a, is a, it, it exists if it is existing. Or you can talk of corresponding angles, one of these corresponding angles. Which ones are we talking about there? Corresponding angles, we know that they are equal. We are talking about what? The ones that gives us an F, it creates an F like this. So this angle, if it is equal to this angle, that is their corresponding, therefore these two lines are parallel. You can consider the issue of the core interior angles. As we know that core interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary means two angles which add up to 180. Those are the C angles. So if this angle and this angle that you have here, if you add, if this is X and this is Y, you add X plus Y, you get 180. It means the two lines are parallel. So you go back to the parallel lines concept in order for you to prove that the lines are parallel. That is the, that is the idea. You, you must go back to the idea of the parallel lines. It is the same thing as proving that uh, uh, considering of a cyclic quadrilateral. You just go back to the idea of a cyclic quadrilateral. What do I know? Opposite angles must add up to 180, this and that. So in this question, they asked us to prove, like to justify is, is this a, it's, a, it's a question. They're asking you, is these two, parallel? Are, are they two parallel? Is DE parallel to BA? It's a question. It's a question. Justify. Is it or not? All right. Let's check. This is our DE. So I'm just going to remove this so that you properly see. So that's 2.2. 2. So we want to prove this. DE is this tangent that we are given before. Remember, that's our DE. BA is this line. This is our BA. So, if truly these two lines were parallel. Let's say these lines, BA and DE. If truly they were parallel, you were going to see that this angle here creating a Z like this. If we create a Z, which is the alternate angles concept. If this was 80, this was supposed to be also 80. But it's not like that. It's not. This is 80. This is 54. So it's not. They are not parallel. They are not parallel. Because we are supposed to have alternate angles equal. The ones that create a Z. So if you create a Z like this, this one, it's a straight Z. The angles there, they are different. If this was 80 degrees, it means the two lines were parallel. 
So these ones, they are not. So the reason there is, is it? No, they are not. No. So the reason, considering the idea of the alternate angles, the ones that create a Z, alternate angles are supposed to be equal. But these ones that we are seeing here, they are not equal. They are not. So alternate angles given, not equal. So that's, if they were going to be equal, we are going to say it's a tangent. That's, it's opposing to what we know. All right. Is BA parallel to FG? Justify your answer again. BA, FG. So again, our reason, we are still on the parallel lines, but we have to check now, where is BA? This is our BA. We are still on the BA, but this time they are considering to FG. This is our FG, this one. All right. So if you consider this, this is our BA, all right? This is our BA. There are angles already given there, so you can take advantage of that. If we check here, there is an angle of 80 degrees, an angle of 80 degrees. These two angles are the same. If this angle and this angle are the same, we are talking about corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are equal. Or you can consider what is happening inside here. There is 80, there is 100. Co-interior angles are supposed to add up to 180. 80 plus 100, 54 plus 126, you get 180 degrees. So meaning to say, yes, these two, they are parallel. These two, yes. So the reason, one, like I said, you can talk of the corresponding angles. We saw what is happening between 80 and 80. All right. So you can talk of corresponding angles equal. All right, corresponding angles equal. Uh, that is what we have there. Uh, corresponding angles are equal. Sorry for that. They are equal. Or you can consider this, like I said, here, the 80 and the 100, they are inside of the shape, forming the C. These are core interior angles. Remember, core interior angles are supplementary. So also, it can be another reason. So you can consider that of core interior angles. So core interior angles are equal. That is the idea there. Sorry, sorry for that, guys. Guys, very, very sorry for co interior angles are supplementary. You see, like I actually wrote the right thing before. You see now, guys, supplementary. Very sorry for this. They add up to 180. The ones that are equal corresponding. Please, please, guys, don't don't confuse this, okay? Go back here. Uh, this is what we have. Co interior are supplementary. They add up to 180. Corresponding angles are equal. Okay? So that is the idea there. Uh, in most cases, uh, you are given these conditions to justify. If they are, then they can even ask the same question as proof. Prove that. Prove that. So these are your typical questions. So till we meet again.